guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are here at the Electrify Expo in Redmond, Washington. There's a lot going on here. So we've done our test drives and uh, we've never driven an EV. And I gotta say, it was a lot of fun. Today, we're just gonna finish our walkthrough. There's a lot of vehicles to look at. Of course, Tesla's here, Ford's here, even Toyota's here. We're gonna do these walkthroughs and then we'll go to, uh, there's a ton of alternative transportation methods. So uh, you guys might know we live in an RV. And instead of having a tow vehicle, we have our electric bikes. Keeps us more in shape and it costs us nothing to, to ride those around essentially beyond the purchase price. So I'm excited to see, is there anything new, any solar? Well, what's coming up? That'd be kind of neat. But first, check out this F100 Custom. This thing is freaking awesome. I've actually seen, you can see the build out uh, online. They took out what would otherwise have been, of course, a regular F100, gutted it. It's an electric vehicle. And let me tell you guys, this thing can do some uh, some burnouts for sure. Because you have the, the torque of the, the batteries and the motors right up front, you can see 480 horsepower, 364 foot-pounds of torque. You do have a steel frame, of course, and steel body, but this thing can really haul. There's some uh, other specs on here, but this is a, a 1978 F100, uh, but they took the Mach-E performance and they put it in there and it's pretty dang good, I gotta say. I wish that we could see it and I love this tint job, but pretty standard. They did take the dash out, they reupholstered it a little bit and they did put a bigger screen in there, of course, because you do need to be able to see all of your, uh, your specs and how much uh, battery life you have left. You need navigation, of course. You've got one of the fins for the Sirius XM and all that. But I think they did a really nice job. That's a beautiful truck, for sure. Really, really well done. Of course, we have the Mach-E. I think they're very good looking, uh, looking vehicles. Calling it the Mustang is a little, uh, a little far for me, but everybody has their own opinion on that. And the Lightning. And I think what they did really well with the Lightning was it feels like, I mean, it just feels like an F-150 that is now electric. One thing that I dislike, and you can see this guy does have a frunk uh, with a separator here, but one thing that I really don't care for personally is this front end. It, there's something about it that feels really, really cheap. This material here, just very plasticky, uh, it doesn't feel like a regular F-150, it's a higher quality, right? This, it just, uh, there's something about it. It doesn't do it for me, but you know, pros and cons, right? Maybe some people like that. The paint job on this guy in particular, beautiful. And especially considering this has been at plenty of shows, I'm sure, you know, there you are. Lots of storage. You still have the under storage here, so you can fold up that seat. Yeah, that really nice panoramic roof. Yeah, nothing wrong with this guy here. It's otherwise pretty nice material quality and a lot of options in this guy. You either love it or hate it. So if you're a pickup truck person, there you go. It's not a good truck, that's for sure. I mean, when it comes to towing things, it's just, you're not getting the range. We're just not there yet. But if nobody buys them, of course, it's kind of hard to develop because you're not making the money to develop. I don't know if Ford really has that problem. They've got a lot of money. So let's keep going. And here we have Kia. They've got an EV, what they're calling an EV9. And uh, we saw the EV6. Uh, the EV9 is just a bigger version of that. I asked about one through five and then seven and eight. They don't exist, so I don't know what's up with this. These rims are what I think are horrible, but you know, they're very unique. This front end, to me, feels a little bit nicer. You've seen really cheap plastics on the front end. I think this looks a little nicer. It's a little more plain, uh, you know, but I love these headlights. I think those are very interesting. They look like, you know, a fancy electric vehicle, like high-tech electric vehicle. And uh, these are some interesting uh, door handles. Let's see, I don't, I, I assume they pop out and they'll go back in. I can only imagine having issues with <laughs> the motor not bringing these out. I don't know what that's all about. And you can see the interior design. I think that the screens are a little small, but that's just me. Uh, I'd rather have one really good, bright, big screen than a bunch of small screens. Personal preference though, it looks comfortable enough. And you can see how busy it is here today. You don't have as much cargo space with the third row up, but you do have three rows in this thing. And for an EV, that's a pretty big deal. That's kind of nice. So uh, the style's different. It's definitely different. And we can see this guy is in a little bit more of an intense blue. That's something for sure. Yep. Yeah, now I noticed that the EVs for Kia, they've really been going with a more flat look here. 
really flattening it out. Um, you know, to each their own. I do think these captain's chairs in the middle are, are very interesting. I think this might actually replace, you know, of course, depending on the range, which let's see what kind of range we're looking at. I think this actually might replace a minivan for a lot of people. Zero to 60 miles per hour in 4.5 seconds. And again, in a minivan, right? Oh, uh, 5,000 pound towing capacity. Kia estimates about 250 miles. So especially when it's cold, you're not getting close to that. It does have all wheel drive though. So that might explain some of that. I would be nice if you could disengage the, the all wheel drive. So it's a selective four wheel drive system. That would be really nice. Personally, I would like that option. But most people probably don't care about that. I like the matte finish on this. This is a partial hybrid electric vehicle. This is a Sportage. They're, uh, ooh, what are they saying here? They are estimating 84 miles per gallon electric. I believe this is a plug-in. Uh, and then of course, if you're on gasoline, only 35 miles per gallon, but it's a bigger SUV. I like the, the wrap job they have on this one. You don't have a frunk on this. And so when we're talking about just electric vehicles, I think going, you know, a partial is definitely a good way to go. A lot of people like the Sportage. I think they're a little pricey for uh, for what they are, just personal opinion. God, I love this finish here. Uh, and it doesn't look like they have pricing on this, but, oh, they do. And it looks like these guys are coming in at about 45, 285. So if it was between, personally, the Nero and this uh, Sportage partial uh, EV, I'd probably go with the Sportage for the same price. Yeah, you can bring the whole family though. It's uh, two rows and then lots of storage in here. Now this is very interesting. I've never seen a Porsche e-bike, but here it is. Integrated battery. It's a mid-drive motor. Thinner, but uh, grippier tires. That's that's something for sure. <laughs> they can, there's no price listed. I think that's intentional. And here we are at the Toyota lineup. Uh, and it's very interesting because again, they have one electric vehicle, but the Toyota CEO actually doesn't believe that electric vehicles are necessarily the future. They could be a good option, but they are really trying to invest in hydrogen, which makes a lot of sense. Five minutes to charge to get, you know, three, 400 miles. I am inclined to agree with that. Uh, and then hydrogen is the most available resource that we really have for energy. Really the only downside is that while well, hydrogen used to be pretty inexpensive, right now it's also increased. Cannot remember what he says, but it's almost doubled in price. Uh, no almost tripled in price, I think you said, from what it from when it originally came out, something like that. It was like 17 cents, and now it's up to like 41 cents, or something like that. It's something ridiculous, uh, per, I think it was kilogram, or something to that effect. Uh, that's kind of nuts, but uh, the, I think it, as there's more competition, as there's more options, as it's easier to manufacture, these things just come down in price. I do find it interesting, they're coming out with the Grand Highlander for 2024. I think it's gonna be supposed to be a screen wagon here from Jeep. That's a, that's a big, the Highlander's already a big vehicle, that's gonna be huge. One thing they're showing here is a lot of uh, a lot of hybrids, which is a good option, you know, for most of us, right? We don't have to worry about plugging it in, but you do still have oil changes, and you have, you know, you have two different systems, which yeah, it's going to add more complexity. You get better fuel economy though. With the new Prius, I think they look fantastic, and we all have our conceptions, and we either love or hate the Prius. But here in Seattle, nobody wants to get stuck behind a Prius. I think these look a whole lot nicer. A lot more like a regular sedan, and I like them here in the darker color. Lots of rear space. You have a lot of cargo room. Your visibility is a little bit more limited uh, because you don't have that, that window right here that you used to have, but I don't think people are going to mind that all too much. I think the styling makes up for it. I like, I like the one. This is kind of an interesting design feature, I think, but not, not too bad. Partial head. That's a big front door uh, and very sloping, very aerodynamic. You either love it or you hate it, but I think this is a little bit easier to love. Uh, it's a very unique style and it doesn't scream, you know, Prius to me right off the bat. I happen to be a big fan of the rims here. And I do think they kind of remind me of the uh, Dodge Dart a little bit. One kind of interesting thing in here is that where there used to just be only the screen on the side, that's where your speedometer was, they brought it back to the middle and you still have this chunky, weird Prius steering wheel. Uh, you have a funny little selector here uh, for your, uh, well, not only your gears, but you know, everything else. I think that's, that's very interesting. <laughs> I'm sure you get used to it. Yeah, there is a lot of this particular trim. It uh, doesn't have a sunroof, but it does have some interesting characteristics design-wise. Uh, there's a lot more headroom in the back, but even up front uh, at 5'11", 
hey, that's comfortable enough. I'm sitting back and it, it feels weird. And as you close, you know, you close the door, you, you kind of get closed in. It still doesn't really, I mean, you can see, it doesn't really feel bad. There is a massive A pillar here, but uh, for a Prius? I don't like how much, I think I don't like this about any car, but I just don't like how much like roof you see before you have windshield. The slope. So right now, this is at my eye line, but I can definitely, so my eye line is straight out here. I can see that though. If It doesn't take much of a tilt ahead uh, to, to see the roof. So definitely, but that is a massive, <laughs> <laughs> massive mirror and I think they did that to cover up the eyesight that takes up a lot of the visibility uh, I don't know but it is it is a huge improvement I think I think more people can get behind the, uh, the Prius now and they did keep the price I think they're around about starting around 28 29,000 somewhere in there and then you have that Toyota quality but again you have two different systems is it worth having to maintain both for some people it is Oh, this is a Corolla Cross, so they took the Toyota Corolla, made it a little bit bigger. Uh, it's, it's definitely interesting, but you had one of these as a rental. How was yeah. it? I actually really liked it. Was it, yours a hybrid as well? Yeah, it was a hybrid as well. Uh, I never plugged it in, but I could have. Yeah. Um, but it was a, yeah, it was just a rental, so. Yeah. I got a lot, I think I only had to fill it up. I had it for six weeks, and I only had to fill it up like two or three times. It's pretty, pretty decent. And uh, I was going back and forth to work a lot, yeah. It was comfortable, it has a lot of space. I, it felt more like an SUV than a car. Yeah, there is a lot of storage in here. Uh, and I mean, yeah, it definitely feels kind of like a, kind of like a RAV4 to me, I don't know. These, uh, these front seats. Small middle console. It's not huge, but it's also not bad. And I personally, I think adding the light up here with the sunroof makes a big difference. Did yours come with the uh, the rack? I guess it might. Obviously, it depends on the trim. But I don't think so. I think there's a lot higher trim now. Yeah. I also kind of like that green. Uh, Emma did not. <laughs> but one thing that is very interesting is seeing the the tundra and the sequoia here the sequoia really this is a nice this is a nice rig you do have a third row seat two bucket seats in the middle and then two obviously in the front here i think it's fantastic and this paint job on this uh this is a capstone version this is an aggressive grill and it's of course the same design language on both of these guys huge front grills really good i believe these are both hybrid options which Pros and cons, right? Again, two systems, more complexity, but they're still pretty dang fuel hungry though, of course, uh, because they're a massive V6. Uh, and in these guys, uh, they can put out some power, but you're not winning any races. I do really like the new Sequoias though, just myself. And I believe this is Toyota's electric vehicle. So this is a Toyota BZ4X, and it's definitely a unique taste. I, I don't know. This is horrible. I don't know why a lot of these auto manufacturers are doing the second color here, trying to make it feel a little different, and it just doesn't. I don't mind the front, you know, the face of it though. And this is an interesting little piece here, allowing the air to pass through. I kind of like that. But yeah, it's sort of like a, again, like kind of like a RAV4, a little lower. Uh, this center console, as you can see, kind of a Prius, uh, sort of Prius setup there, very Toyota design language. But it did definitely an interesting console. I, I probably would have preferred not to have a glossy black plastic finish on that, but I do appreciate all the uh, all the storage there. And I don't think that your uh, rear passengers will have any trouble. So they do have a, a front wheel drive and an all wheel drive option. 252 for the front wheel drive option and 222 for the all wheel drive option. Uh, personally, I'd take, I mean, you're not going off road in this thing by any means. It's probably not gonna do that great in snow. So I'd probably go with the more range. Again, I don't, I don't love, you know, some of the materials in here, very glossy, very interesting. This fabric, I'm noticing this a lot with electric vehicles, and I really, I, I think this is something that will eventually go away. It's almost kind of like virtue signaling, trying to say, oh, I am using sustainable materials. The reality is this is a vehicle. This is gonna use a lot of materials, a lot of energy to, to manufacture. There's still a lot of plastics in here, even if you cover them with cloth, for example, so. You know, personal preference, it, sounds, it seems like virtue signaling. Not a whole lot of headroom in this. I actually feel like there was more in the Prius. This display is just kind of funny to me. I, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Um, and this is as high as it gets. I don't know that I would be very comfortable in it, but uh, some folks might be. Yeah, so it's, it's different. 
it's different all right so we have the pole stars pole star is owned by volvo but they are very they're reasonably like regular looking cars right i like the the front this doesn't for some reason it doesn't feel as cheap to me and this one has a little vinyl bit and they have a couple of options of course you can see that one's sort of just a painted front uh front grille there as well they're really low you can see it doesn't even come up to my shoulder here but you know it's a sedan i don't think they're gonna sell quite as well i think we're looking at bigger and bigger vehicles on average or something that actually feels like a small economical vehicle i don't think it's bad but i don't know how well it's gonna sell i don't think it's in the right market currently that's just me it's also weird i can't even how the hell do you open it right so there's some of these things it's not a jeweler what the fuck <laughs> how do you open the the trunk i don't know so there's some of these issues that we see also with tesla where it's like why is it so complicated to, to operate some basic uh functions of the vehicle well yeah it's uh that's something so <laughs> you can see how popular they are though so this is and this is a completely different design language uh, for a kind of an SUV. I don't think this one's gonna be extremely popular compared to its uh, competitors, especially with Tesla, but Yeah, it's something it sure is something uh, It kind of looks like a hammerhead shark to me, especially with the, the uh, I don't know what to call this the handle <laughs> to handle the part of your car in the garage I don't know what this is but it, yeah again it's very it is very interesting they're the ones with a lot of lighter interiors uh and and some more splashes of color uh, from the inside of the out and i would give them credit i do think they did a really good job bringing for example yellow uh in and out i think that looks pretty good but design wise and price these are a little up there uh design wise not my favorite but it's all personal preference of course now i do think that some of you guys are going to disagree with me on this and that's what the comments are for. Let me know how you guys feel about these. But uh, this is the BMW section. And uh, of all of the cars here, other than maybe that, uh, maybe the SUV Polestar, these might be the ugliest. I, to me, these are, they're so funky looking. Like, look at, kind of reminds me of a, like a, uh, like a gerbil's teeth. I, I don't know, I don't know. Huge, huge empty spaces on these. And in this case, they decided to just add a little indentation here. And I'm not sure what the designer was thinking, but he gets paid a whole lot more than me. So there you go. You do have the BMW technology. And uh, some of the reviews out of the UK of these have said there was a lot of technology issues with some of the tablets and some of the, the, the higher end features. They weren't as consistent or they were crashing, you know, every now and then. Yeah, teach their own. Let's find out about the range. Each of these gets under 300 miles of range. And if you're looking at this guy, and this is a lot more room in the back, this is something that you'd, you'd be pushing around like an executive or something like that. This is a BMW i7, about 120. One thing that I think is kind of interesting is how much the wheels, they actually have note cards that show, the, if you change the wheels out, 19, 20, 22 inch tires, how much that affects your fuel economy. It's very interesting because the larger the wheel, the more uh, surface, I imagine, on the ground, the more friction, and it really does impact your fuel economy. See, one kind of, yeah, there's a little feature right here as it's going up. You have a little, uh, you can really block out the cabin. That's kind of, a, kind of an interesting feature. A lot of glitz and glam in here. It's definitely a, uh, it definitely has a large presence. I would love to see what this frunk looks like though, <laughs> because this is a massive hood. But this guy is completely differently styled, and I kind of like the rims personally. Completely differently styled. Uh, but this is the BMW iX 83200, but it's chunky looking. And uh, one interesting detail here, and you can see, of course, is standard BMW style. You have more of that satin inside finish. It's, uh, it's very unique. You can see, like, we're looking, working with buttons. Very different. And a lot more space in the back. But this is just, it's very, very different. It does look like you have enough storage, but look how chunky everything looks. The massive bit of uh, tailgate there. It's very, very, very interesting. I also got to wonder, is this, just in case you have the trunk open, do you still have a second uh, light set if you have your four ways on or something like that? That's... That is something. I will admit, I have not done any research into the BMWs other than what I've seen from a couple of reviews. Uh, they're just not my style at all. And for some of you guys, you really love the BMWs, of course. 
And this guy does. I love the headlights here, but again with that grill. Yeah, yeah. 55,400, still under 300 miles of range. Uh, but that's a little bit more attainable. Frankly, if it was between Ikea for 48 or this for 55, yeah, of course. Looking at these weird, oh, that actually has a regular handle. Well, credit to them for that. I kind of like the red. You do have a kind of larger individual screens, but they kind of wrap around as one. Yeah, huge. Uh... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> have a really big sunroof. And there is a lot of room in here, but it's also very low to the ground. Some folks might not mind that. I would imagine it's a pretty quick little car, but beautiful paint. And again, a 55, that's a little bit more reasonable than 48 for a Kia. How do you feel about them? I think they're ugly. <laughs> that's not my style. And overpriced, probably. Well, interestingly, so 120, 89, 55. Overpriced. Well, I do think it's overpriced, but 48 for the Kia, 46 for the Kia, or 55 for that? The Kia Nero or the Kia? Uh, the Kia Nero was the cheaper of the two. It was 46. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Within 10 grand, I'm going, I'm gonna spend a little more money. That's just me. But I'm not spending 46 on a Kia either. Porsche does have an EV. And uh, with the frunk, with the frunk. So you can only imagine how much these cost to uh, repair. <laughs> I really like the red interior, but you don't like that red interior so much. I don't like red in general. Yeah, this is very interesting seeing that it's got three, no, so four screens in this very short car. One, two, three, which I hate, four. And I, I just don't like digital buttons for common use tasks that should not require you taking your eyes off the road just to find because you can't feel. These are pretty quick and they're very interesting because they do give you a, a, a very futuristic sound when they take off, like a whir of sorts. You have a surprising amount of trunk space in here, but not a lot of leg room in the back. Although they do kind of wrap around you these seats, so yeah. It's uh, also this beautiful panoramic sunroof. I wonder if they're, they're using the same manufacturer as Tesla because that is very well done. Okay, and it looks like this, I believe he said was a GT model, and it's coming in at about 154, 154,000, about 250 miles of range, usually you get a little bit more uh, depending. I do think the design language is, you either love it or hate it, but Porsche has some of the best designers, of course, well out of our range. You tried to give me a test drive one, but if you guys know me, once I set my sights on something like that, once I like something, I gotta have it. We're not paying for that. We cannot afford to. I told him, I was like, I can't afford to test drive it. He goes, no, it's free. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> the Teslas, you guys know the Teslas. I think these, they, they can do all the dancing and the, the light blinking and all that. Uh, it was very interesting to learn that these have uh, a very active airbag suspension on the inside. And I do think it's also kind of funny because if you've never seen these open, it doesn't actually just swing straight out. Uh, they swing up and then and then out uh, sort of thing. So very, very comfortable vehicles. But these guys, you're gonna get about uh, 80 plus thousand dollars. You can see a third row in a Tesla, which is, I actually had no idea that they offered a third row. That was, that was news to me. But yeah, if we were looking at one, we'd probably look at like a Model Y. Just a little bit more, uh, a little bit more affordable, a little bit more, you know, basic, but you still get so many features in these. And they're very comfortable and they smell good. What is this? Tesla bot? Tesla bot 2023. Not creepy at all. Okay. Oh man. Yeah, and uh, they offer the white interior and I have no idea, like who's buying this white interior? I don't mean, but I love the materials they, they finish them off with. Go ahead. <laughs> you can see we're collecting all the swag. Interesting, right? You have a lot of headroom. Go ahead. Oh yeah, let me show you this. This door opening and closing. They disable it. With the Model X, they do have the center console right in front of you, the dash, uh, along with that screen, which is kind of nice in the middle. And if you want to get some start draw. Yeah, that's a uh, boy. I can see now why people are buying the X, but not yeah, not for me. This this individual style, it's very. It's very sharp. It is very sharp. 
not my style. I'm, I like the more dolphin face of the three and the Y, just myself. <coughs> They're kind of cool. And I love the frunks on these. I don't know what it is, but I love me a frunk. <laughs> All right, what else we got? Let's go, uh, let's go check everything out. There's also Volvo here and Mitsubishi. Here's Volvo and it does feel like Polestar, doesn't it? If you look at the front ends of these, uh, one thing about these little guys, I think these are something, something 40s. Something 40s, let's see the back badge. The C40s, yes. One thing that I know why they did it, they wanted this line right here to match up with this line up here, but I think it's, uh, it's too sharp. I think it looks kind of awkward to me. That's just personal preference. But these are very nice cars. If you guys have never actually driven a Volvo, they're pretty dang nice, I gotta say. Every time I go to sit in one, there's already somebody in there. What is this guy? <laughs> Let's see, what is this? This is the XC40. Let me see the inside of this. I guess I'll get out. I love the color of this car though. So this is an XC40. Everything really wraps around you pretty well. Um, again with these dang... I don't love that. And a lot of shiny plastic. We can really move away from that uh, at this point. But you know, it, it's supposed to be an SUV, but even though there is headroom, it doesn't feel like there's headroom because we were talking about eyeline. This is my eyeline right here, right up here. And yeah, I, I can see that. This is, you can see that I, I'm com almost completely blinded unless a kid just runs out here. I cleared up some confusion here. So there's a C40 and the CX40. The C40 is more of the coupe. The X, it's a little bit bigger on the back, but not much longer. The range on all of these guys is gonna be about 260 to 275, and they're coming in between 30 and $50,000, $55,000, but they have an EX90. They have the X90 is going to be your gasoline version, the EX90 with a third road seat. You are gonna get closer to 300 miles of range, and they come in just under 80,000 well equipped. And I gotta say, those are some unique, rims right there wow that is something i do like the tail light of course if you guys like the the 90s i don't see a 60 here personally i like the x60s but that is very interesting a little interior shot there um, and again with those materials that kind of just i don't know how do you guys feel about those materials at, at eighty thousand dollars i don't want to be seeing that that's just me they look cheap but I do appreciate they didn't put any really shitty plastic on the front. Um, I'm not gonna touch it because it's behind the behind the fancy line, but uh, it does look pretty pretty decent. That I believe is gonna be their eyesight, and I find that kind of interesting. Very unique. Has a little uh, little unicorn <laughs> bump out. I don't. That's fascinating. But definitely did not expect a, an SUV of this size, about 300 mile range. Very interesting. So it looks to me like these guys have converted what would have otherwise been just, uh, you know, combustion gasoline engines into uh, electric vehicles. Ooh, I love that color. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's got it. Remember kids, electricity will kill you. That is a galaxy. That's insane. <laughs> That's awesome. Conductive classics, that is awesome. This is beautifully well done. And look, regular handles. I can appreciate that. The man right there, well, we very well done. Uh, I like they have a front. Uh -huh. Tell me this is not one of the coolest 64 Ford Galaxy. Not one of the coolest electric vehicles you'll ever see. Look at that. Oh man. This is something I'd like to see a whole lot more of. Is instead of you know gas prices are rising, you like you like hobbies and working tinkering with things. Convert your old car. Why the hell not? That's awesome. This I think is gonna win the show. It's gonna win the show. Look at this <sighs> Volkswagen bus. Oh man, and I even have a little little eating cooking area there. Oh, still fitted for camping. Look at this. Is that not super awesome? Oh, and the roof is done in some nice suede. I don't want to touch it because it looks so well, well kept, but go oh, slam too. With some thin tie. Look at that thing. She's nasty. Look at her. Bissy Moto. That's 
Whoa, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. So you would have no idea this was electric. Is that not sick? Oh, and I love these headlights. So much personality in this little thing. But just for some context, super slammed. Oh, I love this. That wins any day of the week. I don't care what that costs. We're buying it. Have a converted Porsche. That's awesome. Super 73 back there. Look at this Porsche. You'd think though, very aerodynamic. Little speedster. I would bet that gets some pretty good, uh, pretty good range. But I imagine it's a little heavier. They used a, a thicker metal back then, right? So yeah, that's, that's about as classy as it can get. Mm -mm. Beautiful. Imagine cruising down the 101 in any of these. You guys know my love for Econolines. Yeah, the kind of, the Got us an line here. Look at this. They used to have the mid-engine on this guy. Now it looks like it's all your uh, all your electrical doodads. Oh, talk about a perfect shag carpet. Little insulation because you know it's <laughs> you know it's loud in here. Oh, this is awesome. This would be a badass conversion. Make this like a little uh, little RV on wheels. Whoo! Love it. I love it. They do anything fancy with the gauges? Oh, just a little screen in there. Oh, I like that. And then they kept very simple buttons. Yeah. Yeah, this. I'd be very happy to own this. That is sick. Oh, yeah, lots of Teslas over here. This thing has a. <laughs> it's about to take off. Well, well carbon fiber uh, accent on this guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, everything out here. Oh, we saw this guy the other day at the Kirkland Car Show, too. I wonder if these are the same headlights this guy has over here. Oh, yeah, a little air tank in the front. Look at the paint job on the air tank. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Oh. That's it. You know, that's easy enough. But like this kind of a, that's cool. It gives it a little, little detail. You see that? That's awesome. Teslux innovations. Teslux. Teslux. Uh, very, very custom. Oh yeah. Little carbon. Ooh, some of this. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Badass edition. 2018 performance. That's awesome. Yeah, Lambo conversion for the doors. I like even like the little, little rims there. That's kind of cool. Single charge range, 310 miles. And they got the, <laughs> you got to put the air tank somewhere in there. There you go. I like the, I like the wrap they did here too. Yeah. That's cool. And the red seats in this. Look at that. Folks, they want that, uh, that fancy steering wheel. Sure mirrors, put a little uh, put a little cap on it. Finish her off, why not? This feels like Spider-Man, I'll tell you. It's like Spider-Man's cave. Little LEDs around the top up there. That's cool. Super cool. This pay job is slick. We also saw this one in Kirtland. Uh, TeslaOwnersWa.org. This is beautiful. Oh, I love that. Oh, man. Yeah. Whoop. See, range 315 miles. So getting out. This is all-wheel drive performance edition. Super cool. And this is interesting. L E Y. L E Y. L E Y. Lay. Oh wow. Whoa. Wow. That kind of looks like a game controller. That is. What kind of these? Okay. It's interesting. What is this? That's, that's custom. That's the thing. I was going to say, man, you'd be tearing into that. Oh, I like the way they did the plexiglass on, on this with the mirror up. Uh, this is a mirror. No. Which one's a mirror? Holy shit. Oh, it's so they have prices written. Yeah, I know. That's, I know. That's hilarious. 
Yeah, good for them. Hey, make it custom. Oh, and they turned the, the display in there. I really respect that because that display is not facing you as a driver. That's a shame. That looks awesome. That looks super awesome. We have some other really weird cars out of here. And I love this. It's kind of a purple black. It changes colors. I like that. That is a cool wrap. Dang. That's really nice. 98 Tesla. Interesting. This old GM truck never uses gas or diesel. 100% electric. All right, so you have all your components up front. Okay, that must be like a torque converter or something like that. Oh, wow. That's cool. And I, I would think being more rounded, this might be more aerodynamic. Heavy. And she's a... You can hear that. That's a heavy, that's a heavy beast, but that's really cool. All I know is there's wires in there and... That's pretty cool. And how are they getting power back here, or are they? Oh, they are. Yeah, there's the drive line. I mean, they're getting power back here. Uh, they're running wires over there, but not over here. So uh, they have either cooling in there or extra batteries. I don't know. Looks like batteries would be right over here, I bet. Okay. Wow. Oh, that looks pretty nice in there goes to show you can really you can convert and make something even as beautiful as this electric if you so choose hmm. they converted a little uh, BMW oh, Z3 Z3 I really like to see this the circuit boards and I appreciate them putting it in plexiglass that's super cool oh, it looks like a normal car in here <laughs> this weird looking guy is the color of fry sauce. It's a 2000 Corbin Sparrow electric vehicle. <laughs> Look at little dimples on the side, like a little <laughs> golf cart. I bet you that was actually because golf balls, uh, it helps them with their uh, wind resistance, I guess. I bet you that's where they got that idea. Jelly bean style, later pizza butt style. Pizza butt style. This is the jelly bean style. It's a one seater, clearly. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Tell me this does not feel like Dr. Is this fiberglass? Sure is. It is fiberglass. And they still have three <laughs> it's a road legal. It's a trike. How cool is that? It even has a windshield wiper, which I would not have guessed. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, super cool. Electric F250, 95 Ford F250. Super cab with a long bed as it should be, four wheel drive. Approximately 150 miles of range, 60 miles per hour as a four speed manual transmission. Woo! This is very interesting. I mean, you can convert literally anything. Uh, I mean, that's a look all too complicated. You got a couple of electronic components, but I think this is pretty cool. There's your batteries right here there. I mean, it's a working Seattle Electric Vehicle Association. I've never heard of it. That's cool though. Oh yeah. This little Mini Cooper. Look at this son of a gun. This is awesome. One, it's a vintage Mini, 1978 Austin Mini. It was converted from gas to electric with a Honda VTEC conversion kit. It's fast. Honda Civic 5-speed gearbox. The 144-volt battery pack fits in the trunk and gives the car a range of about 80 miles. This is pretty cool, though. You didn't have much room, room to work with, but I'm amazed that they could put a full engine in here. And yet, I mean, they made it work, didn't they? That's pretty cool. All right. Very simple. Not a lot of room in these, but they're very popular in Europe, aren't they? Isn't that cool? Big old box of batteries in there, and imagine that DC to DC converter. Big old wires. Okay, this is awesome. Oh, and then you got a little plug right there. <laughs> That's cool. Super cool. Very well done. If we could get two cars here, I think it would be that Volkswagen bus. This little, uh, little mini. That's awesome. All right. So. This is all the cars. This is already a long video, lots to see. But we're gonna go ahead and finish up our tour here. Lots more to see, e-bikes, there's an anchor behind us. I'm gonna end this video here. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.